Come on, it is fireballing. Holy moly. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a replay for BFME 1 on a patch 2.22 once again on the classical and beautiful map Forts of Aizen in a good against evil matchup El Clasico between the yellow Isengard player Araporn and <laughs> his opponent, the orange Gondor player Mateusz 316. And he's opening with a blacksmith and a barracks, and his opponent, the Isengard player, opening with a furnace and a Uruk pit. So I'm assuming he's planning to creep, which is an unusual strategy, because normally when you play against evil with the Gondor faction, you want to actually be the one who's pushing forward to destroy the enemy lumber mills. But when you do some unexpected stuff, it might work out, because your opponent will expect you to attack him, and he's looking to find those soldiers, but he can't. He doesn't know what the opponent player is doing. And he will be able to recruit one soldier. Will he go for more soldiers though? Or will he demolish the barracks? We will find out very soon. There comes the Vorchan in the middle of the map. And during all this time, Gondor is creeping. And the one thing you want to pay attention to is to not let Hobbit to get the last hit. You want to give it to the soldiers. What you can do is you can put Hobbit next to the soldiers and share experience. Oh, he got the last hit. It's very unfortunate. The soldiers, they won't deal any damage because Uruks are faster. And Isengard has to recruit more and more Uruks. You need in total five Urukai to get the Uruk pit to level two, which is the minimum requirement for you to be able to recruit the pikemen, which is important for later on, because later on you will have to fight against the Gondor Knights. Okay, Gondor was... Oh, but Isengard actually stole one part of the money. That's good. That's very good. However, Gondor was able to get to, la to level 2. And the Hobbit is also almost level 3. That's very important. Because each level is going to make them significantly stronger. The soldier is stalling a bit time, but he won't be able to deal any damage. Not even kill any worker. And Isengard's eco. Oh, that's a big mistake. <laughs> you don't want to go for the work pit that early. You know, you want to fill up the beast a bit more with furnaces and go for the last spot. Last spot remaining you can use for the warp pit because now you will have to recruit six for 650 the warp riders and also for 200 the Uruk simultaneously. And if you can't, you will have to sacrifice your Uruk pit. It will not hit level 2 in time because look at this. The stable is already up on the field almost and the Gondor Knights will be there way sooner than your Uruk pit will hit level 2. Which, you will see, is going to be a big mess. Because you have, in 35 seconds, you will have a big problem. The Vorks, however, are stronger compared to the Gondor Knights. Because with the whole ability built in their kit, they can get more armor and damage. And also, in addition to that, you have also the War Chant from your spellbook, making them even stronger. So, and what you can also do is you can pick a Division of Palantir, give them additional movement speed, which gives you the chase and catch potential. And you can actually kill lots of knights. However, in normal cases, Gondor should be the one who is getting upgrades sooner compared to Isengard. And with the Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor purchased, the Gondor Knights will, you know, definitely be able to outdamage the Vork Riders. And keep in mind that Gondor Knights and also Rohirrim have an additional uh, upgrade which Vork Riders don't. That's the Night Shield, making them also tankier against enemy horses. In my opinion, that's a big mistake. The first night you want to use to destroy the mills. Because these mills have not been touched since the beginning of the game. They are all about to hit level 2. And Isengard is getting actually lots of money, which he shouldn't. But maybe Gondor doesn't know that Isengard has no pikemen. So also Isengard is creeping at the same time. And he's creeping actually quite a lot. He has a level 2 war here, almost level 3. And he was also able to creep this one. And even this one. So Gondor actually doesn't get too many creeps. That's the second creep he gets from the map Forts of Aizen. He was able to creep this one at the beginning of the game with the soldiers and the Hobbit. And just this one now with the knights. Isengard even capturing the outpost. Which is, you know, very nice. Does he have Warchant? He does. So he can use Warchant here. Boom. 50% more damage and 50% more armor. The Gondor knights, they don't stand a chance. They will lose this fight. They will lose this fight big time. Gonna mean in the meantime is a full beast. One, two, three, four, five blacksmiths. So he needs one more only for the uh, seat. For the um, uh, full steel bonus to make the upgrades cheaper. But he lost one of his Gondor Knights, didn't he? Oh, that's that's bad. 
That's really bad. Actually, Isengard getting all the map, all the creeps, and even an outpost with the tower. Tower is very good against unupgraded units. So once Gondor, Gondor Knights will get heavy armor and forge bleeds, Tower will not be that strong anymore. But it will still deal some damage, you know? So the second knight, he's even scouting with the Uruks. He is able to see the stable. And yeah. Actually, he didn't lose a knight. One, two. Uh, he's, he's good. He didn't lose it. And going now for the knight number three. And he has also Boromir on the field. A hero that has been buffed multiple times in the patch 2.2. And he was completely useless in the original EA patch, patches back in 2010. Uh, the last official patch from EA Games was the 1.03 version. And nobody was ever recruiting Boromir because he was too slow, too, too weak, too squishy. And now, as you can see and tell, he's hitting like a truck and he's also quite fast. Look, they can't move. <laughs> you shall not pass. There comes the Palantir. And he has also heavy armor now. But remember, there is a hero Isengard can recruit to counter any hero in the game. And this hero also was the one who was killing Boromir in the films. Look, the knights, they don't stand a chance. They get crushed. The Vorgs hitting like a truck and whole battalion is gone. Now Boromir against the world. The Vorgs, if they would get the chance to hit him, they will hit him like a truck. But Boromir is able to disable them over and over and over again. He doesn't deal too much damage to them because they have heavy armor and also war chant. But his knockdown on the ground ability, the passive from him, is so strong, you know, in those skirmishes. And Gondor doesn't have not even heavy armor yet. Isengard actually quite rich. And he will now make some combos. Uh, banner purchased, fire purchased, everything purchased. Now the armory can be demolished. And you will also have to recruit Lords. If you see Boromi is causing trouble, you can recruit Lords. Now, in the patch 2.22, Boromi and Lords have the same movement speed. But keep in mind that you can use the Palantir, this one, also on your Lords to give him additional movement speed. It increases by 20% for 30 seconds, and this will give Lourdes the chance to outrun Boromir and cripple him. The second you cripple him, he can't move for a minute, which is a long time. And even if Gondor would use the Elven Wood, Isengard can now cover this with his own Tinted Land, get additional armor, War Chant, and if Lourdes hits level 3, the Carnage, will not only make him very strong, but also in the patch 2.2 to the most recent update, the version 3.1, the Carnage grants loots, immunity to knockbacks. So it's legit a big counter, as you can see. It's immune to knockback, and it means Boromir can't knock him down. He's making combos with the crossbowman, Pikeman. Boom, boom. And if Lourdes gets level 5, it's even big, bigger, you know what I mean? Boromir is almost level 4. Level 4 unlocks the leadership, which means more DPS for the nearby units. Also works on the knights. So if the knights are fighting next to Boromir when he's level 4, they will deal 60% more damage. Stable level 2. Shields not purchased. Money from Gondor is not looking too hot, you know. He has almost no map control, but he's regaining some of it. Because Isengard doesn't recruit too many pikemen, he's actually giving up map control. He's trying to win the fight with the war riders only, but that's a short term short term solution you will need to spam pikemen also archer range will get destroyed that's why you should not build it at the outpost because you know you will have to recruit three of them to get it to level two and it's hard you can't the statue won't come up but the second bottom comes the works have to disengage lords is chilling in the castle doesn't want to participate in the fight yet and he's going for the Siege Vorex very early. And it's a big mistake in my opinion. You want to you wanna go for Saruman first, okay? You want to make a bigger army. Because what, what is gonna the Siege Vorex do for you if you have not the army to protect your Siege Weapons against the enemy Knights and Boromir? And these two combos, they can't really burst down Boromir too fast. That's the problem. Okay, so again, map control is the key to victory. And with additional uh, pikemen you could spam from the Uruk pit, you could deny Gondor. Because Boromir can't be everywhere. He needs to run from one settlement to the other settlement. It will cost him a lot of time. And your pikemen will hard counter the enemy, uh, enemy knights. And that's, on, that's the only unit Gondor has currently on the field. He has not a single soldier. He has nothing besides Boromir that can counter the pikemen. 
in Pikeman Spam could win Isengard the game right here, right now. And he will recruit Ballistas too, which is even a bigger mistake. You want to recruit the Rams. The Rams are actually able to break through the gate way faster. And you can kind of protect the Ram way better with your army. You can put the Ram in between your army. There comes the land. But Isengard can cover this. Boromir got crippled, just like in the films. There comes the Warchan, Tinted Land, level 5 Warc Riders hitting like a truck. And Boromir, the captain of Gondor, lies on the ground as his corpse disappears from the Middle Earth. Unfortunately for Lourdes, he wasn't able to get the last hit. That would get him to level 3, but it's fine. And now Boromir has to be revived. I mean, Isengard did a good job kind of dodging Boromir, and he was not giving him any experience and don't you know deny him to level four or level five and the albin mood was way to delete way to delete archer range level two now and also no faramir boromir is still only level three but there is a statue which gives you additional armor and damage which, which makes it hard kind of to fight around this around this area and there comes the first base rush with the knights of gondor with shields heavy armor and forge blades and isengard doesn't pay attention to it Two towers down, and towers give so many power points. Same to the Ballista. Watch the Ballista experience now when Gondor destroys it. Boom! You see this? The, you know, earlier, the Ballista or any siege weapon wouldn't give you any experience by destroying it or power points, and now the punishment is way bigger. So you need to make sure to protect your siege weapon. So that's gonna buy you so much time. Holy quackamole. He was able to destroy the siege works in the two, only two Ballista. Isengard head on the field. And that's the reason why you should spam pikes, 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 pikes when you play against Gondor. Because Gondor's primary army that is mobile, that is going to harass you, are going to be those knights. And one pikeman is not going to be enough. And you can see the shields making them so tanky. There comes the Ranger Allies Special Summon, the Grey Company. Lots of Faramirs are on the field. <laughs> there comes the Warchant with the heavy armor. They are quite tanky. The knights, this one is quite badly damaged. Heal is on cooldown, so you need to be careful. You don't want to lose your knights. If the pikes hit you, they will one-shot you. And uh, the problem here is going to be for Gondor. Once those farmers are hitting level 3, they will also act like a tower. They will have 6,000 HP in shooting non-stop. Uh, which will make the base of Isengard way more durable. And also, the Grey Company didn't really do much. You don't want to put them inside the base like this. And they actually did nothing besides feeding power points to Isengard. Isengard has now six power points in the bank. He has the power points to go for the uh, seat. Uh, not the re freezing rain, the field of fires. You know, that's what it is. And that can make Isengard even more rich. Give him the eco he needs to recruit Saruman. Because he didn't go for the industry. That means he has nothing to boost his eco from his power points per book. But remember, Isengard and Mortal, they, they are made, they are designed to be the one faction, two factions that are going to out-sustain any other faction in the game, money-wise, eco-wise. Because with Devastation, Industry, Isengard has Field the Fires, Mortal has Scavenger, you can actually make quite a quite bank, you know? I mean, that's like the balance of the game. So basically, the good factions have additional summons, they can call reinforcements, but evil factions have more eco that gives them the spam power, they can build multiple Uruk pits, Troll cages and spam lots of units, while good factions have the chance to get reinforcements like eagles, ants, elves, rangers, and of course the army of the dead. Okay, you can see, like I said before, the tower isn't gonna do much once the knights of Gondor have upgrades, and also the crossbowmen inside the tower are not even hurting them. The knight shield increasing their tankiness against arrows significantly. And without the siege works, this so this units will just you know have to sit there, or they can just rotate to the outpost top. But maybe he's waiting for the power points to unlock the freezing rain that will shut down any leadership bonuses which they get from the statue. And also Boromir is back in the business. He's oh my goodness! A new power is rising, and its victory is at hand, ladies and gentlemen. Look at them, boys. He's looking at the map, map control. He's like, hey. You are doing a good job, Isengard player. You are doing a good job. Because Gondor has only two, three settlements, and Isengard is like all the map. 
And there comes the rotation to the outpost. But there are lots of rangers. He's inting. He's way too much. But there are no counter to the wargs. Wargs are trampling. Destroying the well first. That's what you want to do. Destroy the well in the statue and the heroes first. That's your primary target. Lords is coming. And there comes the flank from the white wizard. Saruman. It is fireballing. But he's getting chunk from Faramir. One arrow. He's going M. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? And he will go... What? Kill him! Kill him, man! You want shot? Run, run, run! Faramir! Faramir! The Lero he has shown his quality! He will die, but he will die as a hero of Middle Earth. He gets from level 3 to level 5. That's the reward for killing the wizard. Boromir has been AFK all the time. He was away from keyboard. He couldn't move because of the cripple. But it looks like Lourdes will let him live. Because cripple is on cooldown for the next 20 to 30 seconds. As you can see, the cooldown is 1 minute and 15 seconds. And the duration of cripple is 30 seconds. So after, you, after the cripple duration is gone, you have 45 seconds in which you can't do much. But during this fight, Lourdes was able to get to rank 5, okay? Rank 5 means the white hand has been unlocked. Leadership bonus to nearby troops plus 60% more damage. And he has 12 power points in the bank. That means not only he has the chance to go for the war chant plus Lord's leadership plus Saruman leadership, but also he went for the fuel the fires. Which is a big mistake at this point of the game. Why would you do this when you have 4,000 plus resources in the bank? You can go for the Freezing Rain. Make sure that opponent has zero leadership. That you have so much more leadership. It, even if he outnumbers you big time, you can out damage him. But Gondor is a good camping faction. And remember, Gondor has the best defense in the game. With the best power points in the game. And Gondor is a faction you don't want to get to very late game with. Okay? Because Eagles can be summoned later on. To deal massive damage and now the wargs are hungry one of them is level seven and that's something we don't see very often you know rank seven that comes the vision of palantir with the new animation and you can see they are out running the knights of condor now he needs to run in circles he needs to run zigzag 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 you know because if you run a straight line um straight line the wargs will be able to catch up to you and you will lose yet another knight of condor no Gandalf all game long, but Faramir is level 5 and Boromir, the favorite son of Denethor, still not level 4. Maybe Faramir will be become the real favorite son after this game. I mean, this game is looking phenomenal for Isengard. He has 7 power points in the bank after the field fires. It means he's only 13 power points and a bit more away from getting to the Baldrog special summon, which, when you have only one castle, can be game winning. Because what he can do is he can be summoned, he can destroy your gate, Isengard can go inside the jeans, and that's it. The animation you can see here on the blacksmith is that um, basically it has the iron ore upgrades making Gondor gain a bit more resources from the blacksmiths, which is important because he has no map control. The marketplace can also be demolished, like he did. And you still keep the upgrades, as you can see, the glow is still there. And he's going for the barracks now. And, nah, he's gonna go for the archer range, I'm assuming, right? Watch. No, he's going for the blacksmith. Okay, he, he give up on the archers. No archers will be recruited. And he will spam more trebuchet. They cost 840 each. And also, they get cheaper with every blacksmith you build. Now, as you can see, this was built up, and now they cost only 720. And Trebuchet are hitting very hard, but they need to have the Firestone to hit even harder. And those immobile units, the, you know, the pikemen with the crossbowmen behind, are very vulnerable against those siege weapons. You will see, when they hit, they will hit so hard. But look how many Ballista. This guy is like a whole army of Ballista. <laughs> Holy moly! One, two, three, four, five, six Ballista. How many Ballista you want? Yes! Isengard doesn't let Gondor play. He has still map control. He has Saruman. He's saying, come out. Come out and fight. Boromir. I mean, this is going to be the last defense of Gondor. And he's still far away from the Eagles. He needs two whole power points to get to the giant Eagle special summon. Which can turn the game around, by the way. And if he can somehow defend all of this, now we're gonna take a look into the power points. If he can defend all of this, destroy all these ballista, he will gain so many power points. Watch this. Boom, boom. Boom. Whole power point. This one also dealing, uh, you know, great amount of damage to the ballista. And only two ballista remaining. Lords, what are you doing, Lords? There is only one trebuchet left. 
So Saruman can just go that fireball. Beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. And the great company can't do anything. And level 8, dude. Holy moly. This one also kind of counters the Eagle Summon, by the way. Because Eagles, if you don't know, they are dealing like a burst damage to the heroes. And with the Will of Saruman, you can heal up your Saruman or Lourdes. And take additional two shots. That comes warning around Lords. Lords getting chunked. Boromir knocking down the, the Warc Riders. They are trying to get to the trebuchet, but they can't. Body blocking is coming in clutch. The level 5 Warc Rider will be able to survive barely. And in the meantime, Saruman is leveling up. And by the way, Isengard is playing way too scared. There is no reason to be that scared. You can just go in and destroy everything. Oh, but there comes eagles. You need the war chanters. You need the war chanters. Where is your war chant? Oh. Oh my goodness. No. So close, but yet so far. Look at this HP. One HP left. One HP left. Trebuchet can't shoot. Oh my goodness. Now, I don't know if Gondor can turn this game around. I don't know what to say, bro. But Saruman has to be careful. He's one HP. Faramir. Ooh, nice shot. Faramir gets crippled. Gondor Knights are trampling, but it's a big mistake. There are too many pikemen, but catapult shot. You don't want to be clumped into a small, tiny area like this. But Boromir found his opponent. And he's using the four Gondor ability. Lords, Faramir has been killed. Boromir is still alive. And I don't think this army from Isengard can actually win this. There is no way he can win this. But he's getting so many power points. He has almost 15 power points in the bank. Boromir is going to use the Horn of Condor, but the units are level 5. They are immune to fear. However, if they are level 2 or level 1, they will get stunned. And Gondorites are actually cleaning up this no problem. If he can get, kill Lord somehow, that's going to be big. And like I said, you know, almost 7 power points collected from this fight all, all alone. But the problem is Gondor has almost no map control. He has one and two. But for whatever reason, Isengard was not destroying this. It's a level three farm giving you 25 resources, which is quite a lot, you know? And Gondor actually with the iron ore on the blacksmiths, you get also more 32 from the blacksmiths. He's not as poor as he could be if Isengard would destroy the remaining farms outside. But again, he's so poor that he was not able to recruit Ganna one single time all game long. And there comes the... Doo -doo 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 -doo. But he's gonna just sacrifice them. He used Palantir, by the way. If you are... No, he didn't use Palantir. Okay. Trample. How did Boromir get knocked down? Maybe Catapult hit him also. Alright. So, easy defense. And now, <laughs> you know, he should stop it. Farami will be, will be revived very soon. Level 4 to level 7, it will take you 2 minutes to get them back in the business. And we get a whole Ballista army. Lourdes is still alive. But the Ballistas are exposed. They have like 0 defense and this one knight is gonna destroy them all. 2 knights. And each time they get destroyed, Gondor is getting a chunk of power points. Like 4 Ballista equals 1 whole power point. That's why you need to protect your siege weapons with your pikemen. So even if you lose them, you exchange something. Because the thing is, now, if Isengard trades equal for equal, it's good for Isengard. Because look at the money from Gondor, and look at the money from Isengard. He has 36,000. He just blow up two parts of the world with the explosive mine. I haven't been, been even, <laughs> I was not paying attention to this. He's spamming more and more pikemen. Saruman is almost back in the business. He's level 7, keep in mind. Level 8, massive power spike for the White Wizard. He will get the Will of Saruman that gives additional sustain to the Isengard's army. And Isengard is as strong as you could get, but he's playing it way too scared. Now, look at this current situation. What do you see? You see a very exposed Gunner Castle, right? With like zero counter to the walk riders so what you want to do is instead of going for this many pike spam for no reason or instead of making these combos which are only good to kill the eagles you can literally spam or make two three walk rider battalions and send them inside destroy the trebuchet first and commit to the buildings exclusively if you can destroy this level three buildings here it will break the eco even harder Fireball, beautiful fireball, holy moly. That's the power of a wizard right there. And don't give him a blast potential here. Oh, he's gonna steal him? Yeah, he stole them. Oh, no, 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 no. 19 power points, but oh my goodness, Gondor has also EOD. Gondor has EOD too. 
Oof. Okay, so here's EOD. But the problem is, the second he uses EOD, remember evil factions are gaining power points from losing units too. So the second Lourdes or Saruman dies, only from losing them, Isengard will get to 20 power points and be able to summon the Balrog. He healed them, that's good, it's a level 7 unit, it's very important to be kept alive. Double outpost for Isengard, but Gondor has now 1, 2, 3 farms outside. He's, he's not as poor as he should be. And he's able to spam more and more trebuchet. However, <laughs> like Isengard can come from the gate, can from this, from this, from this, from this, from this, or from this side. He has multiple ways. It's an open gate, you know, all you can eat buffet in the Gonna Castle. But Isengard doesn't want the scheme to last any longer. He's preparing, building an army worthy of Mordor. We have one, two, three combos, one cross point because he didn't make any more <laughs> pikemen. He has 19 power points in a quarter. And three quarters. Only one quarter away. Oh, there comes the cripple. 20 power points unlocked. Again, you lose units, you gain power points. It's a demon of the ancient world. The arc fire will not avail you, flame of Udun. Eagles will be uh, used now to deal with the Balrog. Eagles are also able to deal, de you know, bonus damage to the Balrog. Eagles basically hitting like a truck, by the way. There comes the Breath Fire, but it's not gonna one-shot the level 3 production building, so he needs to hit it one more time with his auto attack. We have nerfed EOD and Balrog, yet they are still extremely strong, but they are not as strong as they used to be in the past. And the Breath Fire wasn't very good from this Balrog. That means he won't be able to finish off the castle by himself. Eagle's timer is gone. He can only use Breath Fire one more time. The duration of Balrog will give you the chance to use it only twice. So you want to use it wisely, okay? But, um, hold on a second. I'm assuming he's going to use AOD here to deal with the army. And he's trying to use the army. And you can see the power point special summons from Gondor is actually very nice. As if AOD, he has AOD. He will summon AOD right here to kill Saruman and his army around him. He needs to use it now. You don't want to lose this level 3 buildings for no reason. What is he doing? He's going to summon it way too late. Way too late. I mean, he will not get defeated, but he should have summoned it like... 20 seconds before, 20 seconds before, low-key, you know? But he killed all of this army, that's good. Of course, Isengard has enough, and Gondor has actually a lot of money too. He has 7,000 in the bank. I think it's because of the scavenger from this dude. He was also able to get a lot of uh, value for the Gondor army. And he was able now to get the first outpost under his control. AOD is gone, doesn't deal too much damage to the buildings, as you can see and tell. Um, also nerfed. AOT before could even destroy buildings in a few seconds. Now, Saruman and Lourdes have to be revived. Level 8 will take you 3 minutes. This dude is level 6. It will take you 2 minutes. And, you, you know, that's one of the mistakes people tend to do in BFME games. Look at the money from Isengard, right? He, there is no reason why this player shouldn't have 2 or 3 Uruk pits in total. He doesn't need those slaughterhouses here. He can demolish all of this, make 2 Uruk pits and 1 work pit. If you have 50,000 in your bank and you are not using the money, investing the money wisely, you are wasting your potential. There is no reason to stuck to get stuck to one Uruk pit exclusively. Zero reason. Sorry, I was hitting my microphone because I'm tilted. I'm tilted. I'm, I'm not tilted. Okay. Level uh, 9 Knights of Gondor. Boromir knocking down the pikemen on the ground. Trebuchet, 1 HP will get destroyed now by the pikemen. Yep. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, no Gandalf all game long, <laughs> Not a, but he has the power points for it, he has actually all the power points besides the Cloud Plague, Cloud Plague is still available, also very strong by the way, because, um, yeah, I mean, Isengard can also get fear resistance from Saruman or Vision of Palantir, but you can't use it in the entire map, Saruman can't be everywhere, Palantir can't work on every single unit in the entire map and cloud plague besides stunning them also reduces their armor which makes it easier for you to kill them and also movement speed will be reduced so but again it hurts my eyes to see isengard with 50 plus thousand in the bank being stuck to one uruk pit in one siege works exclusively and gondor is now getting really easily back into the game for whatever reason Isengard is, ex you know, being exposed fully. Doesn't really 
try to punish his opponent. Again, few pikemen can counter this. Because only, you know, Farami and Poromi, they will need Aegis to kill the pikemen with upgrades. So if you're like two pikemen with upgrades here, you can easily defend this. But look at them shining bright like a diamond too. Like that's a whole leadership army from Gondor. They have this ability. They have this from Farami too. Additional armor, additional damage from this dude. It's pretty strong. Now he's going to the outpost top right side. Gondor has in total 4,000 and uh, 4, resources. He's going to build two statues here, which is giving you the hero bonus, making your heroes cost 10 person less. And on an expensive hero like Gandalf, 10 person is actually quite big. It will make you make him cost instead of 6,000 only 5,400. You can save up to 600. This Rohirrim can't do anything. They are trampling into their death, okay? Lourdes has to be a bit closer to the army. Saruman is easily defending this. The summons of elves or the Grey Company are very strong early mid game, but late game against full upgraded units with leadership, they won't achieve too much. There comes the Horn of Gondor, will stun them, but there is no follow up. Here, the Grey Company would be a bit more useful because then you can kill the pikes and achieve way more. But Cloudbreak is available, and so are the Eagles. The outpost will be fully destroyed, and we will eventually see a second Balrog and second EOD usage in this game. We love Saruman is available. Level almost 7 Lords. Isengard as strong as he can get. But, I mean, that's not true. He has still 200 available command points, but he's not using them properly. He can have a big, way bigger army than he currently has. But he doesn't. Just make a Vork Pit here and two more Uruk Pits and give them numbers. Keep spamming. You don't need furnaces. You don't need it. <laughs> you have 57,000. You don't need it, bro. Come on now. Okay, guys. But, oh, never mind. What? He doesn't. He had like 4,000 in the bank. But he is kind of poor now. There comes Cloudbreak. Cloudbreak is able to stun him. But Palantir could be used to make them immune but he doesn't use it but there comes the freezing rain it will negate all the leadership bonuses they get from farami borami and the statue uh, destroying the statue is a not needed thing you want to destroy the well first and you can't win this fight however he's going now for the beast the beast has good protection though with like two three four trebuchet a saruman can also fireball only one of them firestone yeah, you can see trebuchet are very annoying to deal with. Fireball is on cooldown. But what, what you can do is you can, you know, control one of them. He's gonna steal one of them, but he's getting knocked. What? He's flying. I believe I can fly. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. He might die, though. He's getting knocked down on the ground. Oh, the eagles will be able to finish him off. But there comes the Balrog, the demon of the ancient world for the second time in this game. The eagle can't handle this lord's leadership. The combos are destroying him, literally one-shotting him. And he might be able to destroy the whole castle for the first time in this game. The breath fight, this one was beautiful. Look, that's the breath fight you want to do. When the buildings, the barracks, archer range, or the siege wards are not level 3, you can destroy them with one breath fire when you're ignited. But ignite has almost no cooldown. You can keep igniting yourself. But don't overdo it because it has 30 seconds duration. The castle of Gondor has been destroyed. Isengard has 13 power points. He can go for the devastation or for the industry. But as you can see from his resources, he doesn't need money. What he needs is an army. And he even forgot to revive his Saruman. His outpost, the only thing that keeps Gondor in this game is the one outpost. And that is the one legendary crossbow man almost destroying the statue. Fully committing. The rain is still active. But look, Farami, he's being surrounded by his army. Boromi is dancing. Dance, 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 dance. <laughs> oh, I hear the EOD. And... Lords will die too. He will not let Isengard capture this one. The problem is, the problem Gondor has, he has not enough money to buy the castle by himself. He needs 5,000 to do this, and he's far away from this. I mean, he has, like, he's not very poor either. He has like 2,500 resources in the bank, but he needs the double amount of money he has collected so far to be able to recapture this. The good thing is, though, when he's able to recapture the castle for the second time, the castle will be fully restored, right? He has like no broken parts of the world and Isengard has to siege him one more time. And you can see in the late lead game, when the power points 
even though they are all nerfed in the patch 2.2, it's still painful to deal with, right? Because every few minutes you need to deal with a great company. Every few minutes you need to deal with a Rohan special summon and eagles and AOD. And that's difficult. And also the, the fact that Isengard stopped making pikemen, stopped caring of map, about map control. Also, not the right move. Now you might say, but Shanks, he has 55,000. Does he really need map control? No, he doesn't need it for himself. But when you have map control, you can make sure that your opponent stays poor, right? He has no money to restore, to rebuild, to revive and build a new army. So it's like a win-win situation. You get more money and your opponent gets less. That's why map control is so important. And for that reason, I'm, he became super lazy. He played very well throughout the first 20 minutes into the game but then he become kind of rusty and lazy and sitting on 50,000 for the past I want to say 10 minutes but still only recruiting from one ah never mind he has finally a work pit finally Lutz and Saruman will get the very soon there comes Cloudbreak Stun the Pikeman they can't move the great company will deal with them no problemo Maybe he doesn't know that Palantir also grants you fear resistance because he never used it to counter the enemy Cloud Break. There comes Saruman and Lourdes sim simultaneously. Rohirrim summon, look at this, how painful this is. And very soon he will be able to summon the Eagles too. The Ballista exposed, beautiful fireball on the level 10. You will have to heal him to keep him alive. Okay. And the Uruk Pit, that's big by the way. Why is it big? Because from a level 3 Uruk Pit, you get 50% faster build speed. He lost the level 10 Gondonite for this though, which is really sad, but it's fine. It's, it's not that after all, because he has money very soon, and with very soon, I mean literally now, he can rebuy the castle. Because map control gets him back into the game. He has double outpost, and when he gets the castle too, that will be the first time he will have a huge advantage and have a win condition too. But his win conditions are definitely Farami, Boromir, and his power points. There comes a Freezing Rain that will again shut down the leadership bonuses. The Pikes are running it down. The statue will be the first target. Farami has been crippled, and this guy is way too greedy. But he has the Veil of Saddam, and he should be using it now. Use it, get back full HP. You can't get full back, back to full HP, but almost. Farami can still not move. In the meantime, works, and that's what he should be doing all along. Are able to destroy the outpost. Farami will go down. There is no reason to heal him. And also, the outpost will be destroyed uh, this dude is coming closer to give leadership you want to always keep your heroes when they are low far away that the enemy can't hurt them but you know nearby kind of around your army to still give them leadership now they are zooming with the palantir the ranger level three can't survive this one more hit from lords is gonna do the trick but Castle has been recaptured and Boromir was able to survive. In those situations, it's kind of debatable which hero you want to revive, uh, which hero you want to focus first is Isengard. I think it's better to kill actually Boromir first and Faramir. I, I believe Boromir is more useful because he has pillage, stun and more leadership to provide compared to Faramir. But Farami is more threatening against heroes like Lourdes and Saruman. His warning arrow actually chunks them quite a bit. So, you know, I think it's... Both, both can work quite well. Level 10, Knights of Gondor, very tanky, very strong. Without hold, you can't tank this. And now they can just disengage. But you can see the map control, right? Isengard has only one Lumber Mill left. And the problem with Lumber Mills later on is, look at this, he cleans all the trees around, the, around this area. The game lasted for so long that they have nothing to harvest anymore, you know? They need to run all the way back very soon. To actually get money and when you see this what you can do with the evil factions is you can demolish your lumber mill and actually replace it with a slaughterhouse it's better okay so he's waiting for the Balrog cooldown of course the Balrog is going to be available a bit sooner compared to the EOD remember EOD has been used a bit later they have the same cooldown eight minutes and 30 seconds and that's going to be the third time we will see them in this game actually this game lasting for a really long time but Isengard, oh my goodness, man. He had so many chances to win this game, boys, right? Am I right or not? He had so many chances to win this game, but yet he didn't manage to do it. The Balrog will be special summoned. You wanna summon him here, actually, but it's fine. Use Breathfire like this. 
I mean, if he's good, he can destroy this castle by himself. Because nothing is level 3, everything will get one-shotted. Watch this. There you see? The stable will get one-shotted. Nah, it's a... Ah, I don't like this. You wanna... I would go like this. Here, this, this, this. Then go here. In Brave I like this. Oh, but he's also not flying. You wanna always keep flying. Oh my goodness. If he can destroy the castle... Because he has double outpost. If he can destroy the castle with the Balrog, this game is over. Hold on a second. Is this game gonna end now? Because the outpost is still under control from Isengard. <sighs> he has been defeated. Oh my goodness, what a game, man. What a game. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like for this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.